What's going on guys, it's Mario, back again with another trade video. I did have the opportunity to trade Neil on a first red day, but I kind of messed it up. I missed a great opportunity on a pullback by a couple cents, and that turned into FOMO, and I got emotional, and I ended up taking a loss. So I'm gonna cover that trade and kind of explain to you it, uh, what happened, because uh, a lot of traders, this happens to a lot of traders, by the way, uh, now, I also traded United Airlines. I did get, did manage to take a, a, a little nice win in that one on a bounce. So I'm going to go over that trade as well. Uh, so, all right, guys. So, hey, uh, don't forget to smash that like button if you learned something from this video and also subscribe to this channel. I appreciate it, guys. Let's get started. Let me share my screen. All right. So let's get started. Okay. So, Neo. Why Neo? So, I actually shorted Neo on Friday, um, actually, yes, Friday right here in this day. It looked like it was gonna do a pullback. I actually took a, a small loss in this one, but overall, the reason why I'm short is because it's overextended here. Um, above the Bollinger Bands and also above the Stochastic. So that is pretty much overall the, the main trade overall. So what was I looking for at the open? Um, I was looking for it to go red now, but fortunately, I kind of went red pre-market. I'm not a fan of that when it goes red pre-market because you can kind of get a squeeze or weak open and kind of squeeze you out. And that's actually what happened yesterday. It went red pre-market. Uh, it kind of squeezed and, and it actually went weak and it kind of held those numbers and it squeezed out a lot of shorts. So I didn't want to get trapped on that. So I wanted to avoid all that kind of trap. So I was looking for a weak open, but confirmation of a green or red. But to kind of break this this uptrend that it was kind of created in the uh, what is it the 30 yes there you go see this uptrend that was creating a very very strong uptrend I wanted to make sure it broke that and it also was red um, so it did do that so after that I was looking for you know what this is a great opportunity for me to get short on here at the uh, at pivot midpoint level which is usually one of my favorite places to, to get short along at the pivot uh, midpoint level. Uh, unfortunately, um, it literally just reached the uh, VWAP, the volume with the average price, and it did not go above that. And literally, it just sold off. So when I saw that, when, you know, I was just like, what? Come on, man. I can't believe this, dude. I literally missed it by like a couple cents. I believe it went as high as 42.90, and I had orders at 43, 43.20 around the area. And honestly, uh, I've seen this where, where price pulls back and it does pop over VWAP and sometimes it hits certain levels and it kind of does downtrend. So I was actually hoping for that and I was trying to follow my rules, you know, hey, stick to lines, stick to whole numbers, you know, they usually do work out and this time it didn't and this happens a lot of times, guys, and I want to talk about that because Things like these are the reasons why traders tend to break their rules, you know, especially you have uh, orders in certain lines and you see something like this happen where price does not hit your line. It hits the, uh, the VWAP and it literally starts selling after that. So you, after this, you know, after if you really think about this, after it kind of pulls back like this, you know, it's kind of hard to get in because at that point now you're literally are chasing. Um, so that's the reason why I didn't get in because I was actually hoping, Hey, maybe it pulls back to this 4250 and bounces again. And then we get that, you know, that, that, uh, 43 or that midpoint. So I could get in at a good, at a good, at a good perfect entry, but it literally sold off. And I was just like, what the heck, dude, look at that, man. Straight to second S2 pivot level. Um, it was just straight mayhem sell off. And I was just like, no way, man. I've been scouting this trade for the last week or so. I missed it last week. I had a small loss last week. <clears throat> but I felt like, you know, when it goes red, I'm going to make up that loss plus more. And so I was very frustrated, guys. I was really, really frustrated in this trade. Um, and because of that, you know, I, I, I kind of got a little bit of FOMO, you know. I was like, you know what? Whatever, man, we're gonna get a pullback again. And there should be a, another entry for hopefully an end of day type of pullback for two lower days again. So I was looking at the, the first S1 midpoint, I mean, first S1 uh, pivot level to kind of get in. Um, 
and this is this is where things like these uh, stuff like this where where you miss your your entry on on the right uh, level gets you to kind of like start chasing because um, or or not have patience because I literally saw a price kind of like I guess gonna get stuck here in this area before you hit that uh, the S one pivot level. So I was like, you know what? I don't want it to happen. What happened earlier? I don't want to miss it in case it does start kind of going down and pulling back. So I started shorted here at a 4065, uh, but eventually this squeezed out and it hit the, the, the S1. And I was a little bit like, whatever, man. It's a couple cents, hopefully it pulls back. But the problem is it held this move and it started to kind of turn around. So I actually had some orders. Um, I was looking at the range of uh, the uh, midpoint in S1. So I had some orders around the uh, S1 and also had some orders at 42 and even 43. So, but again, I lost my patience. And again, the reason why I lost my patience and the emotions got the best of me because of what happened earlier, you know, where I missed an amazing entry by a couple cents because it did not hit my whole number level. It, it, it literally got stopped by the, the, the VWAP. Now, this is where it kind of gets a little bit frustrating trading, especially large caps, because a lot of these large caps are being manipulated by algorithms, um, you know, and high frequency traders, uh, you know, pretty much machines, bots. So in a way you are competing as, a, as, a, as an individual trader, independent trader, you are competing with machines, you're competing with computers. Um, and sometimes it could not be fun. You know, that's the reason why, why, you know, a lot of traders look at levels, the importance of levels, because, you know, chasing is, you, you're gonna lose, it's a losing game. Uh, and that's the reason why I decided not to get in, even though, you know, it looked like it was going, it's going to keep going down because it's hard to know, man. It could have literally held a, a higher high, a lower high or higher low, and it could have bounced off. Um, these type of moves, it's hard to predict, you know, the best thing is just to try to get in the best level. So again, guys, um, you know, very frustrating, you know, that I missed that trade. Uh, but again, I took a was worst part of it is I took a loss, you know, which makes it even worse, um, you know, and, and again, my thought process was like, okay, I got this range that I'm looking at, hopefully I can get in here at S1, uh, maybe at 42, and then at midpoint or whatever, and then we get a reversal. And because of what happened earlier, I decided I started chasing price, you know, I chased right here. You know, even though eventually did hit uh, S1 pivot, and I changed right here. You know, because I saw some weakness, I saw some stuffs, and it's like, oh no, price may turn around. Oh, let me let me get in before it does, and then not, to kind of hit back to S1 and kind of squeeze me out. And it, it, you know, so I added here, added here, and I got squeezed out here because I put my stop above this level, and my my thought process was like, hey, maybe this is going to be the top, and it's going to hopefully turn around. And maybe they could get out at you know 39 or 40 or whatever, uh, but I just kept squeezing out, and you know I got stopped out here. But originally 42 was going to be my my second entry, but again I chased. My emotions got the best of me, uh, unfortunately, and and I decided to kind of chase again here. You know I got stopped out here, and I'm like you know what I think 42 is the, the spot. Boom, got in. Boom, got squeezed out again. <laughs> so, so that was like, dude, I was like, man, forget this, dude. I am done with Neo, man. Um, one other thing that I want to mention is that Neo is also an SSR. You know, once a first red day is an SSR, you kind of lose some of that edge because you not, you cannot long, uh, so because short sellers can no longer short the bid, they have to short the ask. So, and so it's, it makes it very easy for, for, for algos and also traders who are in the long side to squeeze out some of the short sellers. And that's literally what just happened because it just kept trending, kept trending. And after this, I'm glad I got out, man. I'm glad I got out because I could have shorted again here and I would have gotten squeezed out again. So I'm glad I got out. I usually give two opportunities on a trade. If it doesn't work by the second time, you know, I'm uh, rarely do I go the third time. Um, I was thinking though, if it hits 43 for this midpoint, I may get in again. But at that point, I was just frustrated. I was looking at the bigger picture. Look, my loss today is not as bad because I made a win at United Airlines. I could only make it worse. And that has happened to me before. I've made my losses worse. And 
there's nothing worse to just get for, get a, a you know get stubborn and keep short and keep short and then keep getting squeezed out, keep getting squeezed out. I mean, the trend is it's above VWAP, the trend is holding, and it's an SSR. Not only that, but the Nasdaq, the Nasdaq was just trending like crazy, um, especially after this huge gap down, this huge move, a bounce just was just we just we just expected, you know. So this thing could have trended all day too, Nasdaq. So. There were just too many things, you know, going against me. And honestly, I missed the trade. This was a trade. Get in here and let it ride. That was a trade, and I missed it. So that's what happens sometimes when you miss opportunities like that. Like, your mind just messes with you. Your emotions mess with you. And then you want to, oh, man, I, I got to get back in. I got to see what I could do. And then most nine, – nine out of ten times, you end up messing up and losing money. So – uh, this was definitely a, a really good uh, learning lesson for me. And again, this is not the first time it's happened to me, but um, I guess it came to my senses on the, on the second squeeze that, and, and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm out of here. Uh, so that was Neo, guys. That was Neo, guys. Uh, hopefully some of you guys did take advantage of this trade. This is a beautiful trade. I mean, you could risk here like a dollar to make like, you know, five. So, I mean, 43, 42, 41, 40, 40, 39. So four dollars. Risk one dollar to make four. I mean, that's an amazing trade. That's an amazing risk reward type of trade. That's the reason why I love uh, First Red Day. Some of the best, you know, count builders out there uh, set up. So that was that, guys. Um, I was happy, though, that at least I made some money on United Airlines. Uh, the reason why I went with United Airlines is because, uh, let me take out the uh, Bullerger bands, was because um, on Monday, uh, Pfizer did report uh, that they had a uh, COVID-19 vaccine that had a 90% efficacy uh, rate, which is amazing, which is insane. Uh, so that was huge news because the whole reason why we're in this, all this mess with, uh, is because of coronavirus. So everybody's waiting for a COVID, um, excuse me, for COVID-19 uh, vaccine. So finally, Pfizer looks like has uh, some good news. There's some uh, light at the end of the tunnel and things are looking good. Um, so pretty much stocks that got affected by COVID-19 are moving. Like, it's not just airlines, airlines, restaurants, um, you know, uh, what else, like uh, theaters. It, it, it was so much moving yesterday, it was insane. But I felt like United Airlines was gonna be a, a nice move uh, for a second day continuation of low hanging fruit. So I decided actually to, to go long pre-market. And the reason why I actually decided to go long pre-market was because it was hitting a major support level here at 40. Um, but not only that, but also the market was, was also at the lows. And I felt like, you know what, I think the market is going to open strong. If the, and again, the reason why I felt like the market was going to open strong is because of how far it has sold off, you know, so a bounce was kind of like, dude, so I felt like the market was going to open strong and if it opened strong, Mer United Airlines was going to be, was going to go with it because United Airlines is one of these companies that's that's in the, in the S&P 500 index. So I was pretty much right. It opened strong. I was actually looking for a bigger push, a break of 42 to start taking some profits. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the opening, the, the opening trade, the opening bounce was kind of weak because it started to kind of pull back. Um, and I was actually very surprised it didn't go, go green at the open. I was actually looking for that. So when I noticed, you know, price kind of holding and uh, S&P 500 started to go below the VWAP, the, the moving, uh, the volume with the average price, I was like, you know what, I'm out. I'm taking this. This is something that does not look right, does not feel right. Let me take my profits call of the day. So I still made a decent uh, tr uh, trade here, still made some money there. So I was happy about that. Um, that's the only thing that made me feel better about NEO uh, because NEO was a very, pretty big uh, missed opportunity. But this is how you learn, guys. This is how you learn. You learn by making mistakes, uh, going back and reviewing your trades, um, and and kind of learning from that. Learning from those mistakes. You know, what did I learn? What mistakes did I learn uh, from this trade, and what can I learn? So one of the things that I'm gonna write down and really kind of keep in mind is that, especially on a first red day, uh, when there's so much downside, is that if the first resistance bounce after a bounce is is a VWAP. And it's not gonna hit your 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 level. Go with the VWAP, man. Just go with the VWAP, and that is it. Because once you miss that opportunity, it messes with your mind. It really does. It messed up with my messed up with emotions. I got emotional, and I started you know doing trades I shouldn't have done. 
the move pretty much already happened. You know, once a first red day goes SSR, goes um, that's down below 10%, it goes um, SSR, which is um, short seller restrictions, where short sellers cannot no longer short in the bid, they have to short in the ass. Their edge just kind of gets messed up, you know? If anything, actually, let me share my screen again. Uh, a good trade would have been to, act, uh, on NEO, would have been to actually go long, go long here on, on S2. I mean, now that it break below the, the lower range of the uh, one standard deviation, uh, but it was already an SSR. So going along here and maybe risking, you know, below uh, S3, that would have been a great long trade. I mean, at that point, your edge is actually in your side if you go long because not only are short sellers going to cover there, but also uh, the stock has gone on SSR and short seller restriction mode where – you know, the longs have an edge now because now they can squeeze out some of the shorts. So, you know, if I would, you know, next time I get the other thing too, is if I miss anything like this and it starts going, it starts selling off and it goes to S2 or whatever, I may actually go long. You know, I may actually go long right here. You know, that's if I miss it, of course, because it's an opportunity right there, you know? And you know what? I may actually, if I get an opportunity to short here, cover here, I may actually go long too, you know? make two trades on, on the short side and a long side. So that's the great, the beauty of, of, of the uh, first red day that, you know, there's two trades here, both long and short, the short side here and on the long side here for a bounce on S2. So that is something I'm going to keep in mind for next time guys, because this was a huge miss me here. And, you know, usually when I do short on, on uh, first red day, I, I do not, my mind does not go over, Oh, I, I, I got to go, you know, go along and bounce. I, I usually do not like to change my my bias, but when it comes down to, you know, first red date, I think it's an opportunity, you know, to not only short it for the fade, but also buy it for the bounce, you know, especially if it's overextended to the downside, especially if it goes on social search seller restriction mode, because there's definitely an opportunity there. Uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. Wanted to cover that. <clears throat> uh, you know, a lot of stuff like this happens to traders. It happens to everybody, guys, and it gets very, very frustrating. Um, that's the reason why trading is not easy. It is absolutely not easy uh, because when you miss out on an opportunity like this, your emotions get the best of you, and you kind of just lose it. You get upset. You get frustrated, and then that's where the mistakes tend to happen. So I did, of course, if you notice my trade, and I missed, I started chasing on the pullback. You know, instead of waiting for the levels to hit, I started going, like, you know what? It may. It looks like it's going to. It's going to top out here. Let me get in a little bit early just in case it doesn't hit my level. And, and, and there's a perfect example, guys, of how things can go wrong. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button if you learned something uh, or and subscribe to this channel. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys again. Take care, guys. Have a good one.